the biggest challenge in picking this year's winners was we had quite a large pool of extremely good entrants. So we had to work our way through them to see who is really outstanding. And it is difficult if you have a family of already very high quality presentations to pick the one who is a little better than all the others. My research centers on the question of how the brain controls instinctive behaviors. So those behaviors that animals can perform with very little, little or no prior experience. And particularly I've been focusing on the control of uh, parental behavior. So it's a very uh, fascinating behavior because it has a very strong instinctive component. At the same time, is a very complex behavior. So in mice, for instance, that is the model system within which I'm, I'm working on studying these questions. In mice, you have uh, specific motor components during parental behavior, such as pup retrieval to the nest, for instance, or pup grooming, or in females, nursing. But then you also have a strong, strongly increased motivation to interact with infants. And you also have a distinct hormonal states. And what we've been doing over the last um, few years is really to describe how, how a small population of genetically defined neurons uh, can orchestrate all of these um, distinct components. Yeah? And this really provides a model for how um, um, specific neurons control um, different aspects of a complex uh, social behavior. I'm really interested in uh, the question of how does cerebral cortex uh, perform its diverse functions. It's often viewed as the most complex um, a part of the brain that's responsible for many of our higher cognitive, higher order cognitive functions. And uh, in my research I've been fascinated by the question to what extent are the cells uh, of the same type present in different areas of the cerebral cortex similar or different. And so to address that question we leveraged some of the recently developed techniques of single cell analysis to see how similar and how different these cells of different types are across the brain. And what we found that was really astonishing to us was that the excitator neurons, which are the primary act activity generating cells in the cortex, are almost entirely um, the dependent, their, their gene expression profiles are almost entirely different dependent on where they are sampled from, unlike other cell types. I study how and why habits form in the brain. We know that there are certain brain areas that are important for habitual behavior, including the striatum, particularly the dorsolateral aspect of the striatum, as well as its dopaminergic inputs. And so what I did in my essay, in the research I described in my essay, is to try to dissect the circuits that interconnect different subregions of the striatum and their dopamine inputs. And what we found is that there are separable populations of dopamine neurons that encode different information being sent to areas of the striatum that are important for habit learning versus non-habitual learning. So as we move forward with this research, what we're seeing is that changes in the circuitry actually track with habit learning and we can go back and try to manipulate them to better understand how habit formation occurs. Eppendorf and Science Prize is aimed at young researchers because today's finalists and winners are tomorrow's leading researchers. And Eppendorf wants to be part of that. It's also very helpful for researchers to get noticed, which is important to attract other excellent researchers as well as funds and talent. Writing an essay and explaining in a nutshell what the research does also is a very helpful exercise for young researchers going forward. We especially also want to encourage female researchers to apply. Over the last couple of years, we've had some excellent winners, such as Doris Zhao, Rachel Wilson and Miriam Goodman, all of whom have set up their own labs very successfully. I think my primary motivation is um, to uh, work at the limits of, of what we know about the brain and biology or nature in general. And I guess the, the most rewarding aspect of, of research I find is, is to work towards that limit and then to chip away at that limit uh, as far as biology allows you to. And I think this process of, uh, of getting to that, to that limit uh, and, 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 try and chipping away it and realizing that you're learning something about uh, the brain that, um, that few other people or no one else um, knows at the moment. That's uh, the most rewarding thing I can imagine. So the advice that I would give to researchers who are thinking about submitting a prize entry for this competition is think about what's really important about your research and how do your findings change the way people think about neuroscience as a whole. Take some time to think about why you do research and why it's important and why it matters for a larger picture. I think 
It's easy to think that your research is so narrow, how could anyone possibly actually care about it? But when you step back and realize all the small things you're doing uh, actually really do add up to an amazing big picture, you can always find a great story to tell about the work that you're doing and why it matters. I think this prize uh, will help me in, in two important ways. So the first aspect is that it will just um, increase uh, my visibility as a young researcher and this might in turn uh, make it easier to recruit um, great people for my new lab which I'm starting early next year. Now the second aspect is that um, the process of, of really uh, writing um, this essay and deeply thinking about uh, my research from an, an outsider's perspective in itself was very rewarding and very useful in how I think about um, this project and I'm, I'm quite sure that this will have a, a lasting effect in, in how I think about projects and my research in the future.